Hello all, we'll be continuing the discussion with respect to statistics. In my previous topic, we have seen something called as Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. And we had denoted Gaussian distribution that by saying that X belongs to Gaussian distribution or normal distribution N with some value of mu and sigma. And we also saw the empirical formula. Empirical formula was something related to uh, within one standard deviation, how much percentage of the total distribution falls? That is around 65%. Sorry, this is 8, 68%. In my second standard deviation, it was around 95%. And my third standard deviation, it was around 99.7% 99 of the whole distribution. And we also saw that usually the Gaussian distribution usually follows this guy's of bell curve. Okay. Just, uh, let me just show you. It usually follows if I try to plot my. Gaussian distribution data, it usually follows this uh, bell curve, and this is basically called as bell curve. Always remember the bell curve, the middle point is basically the mean. This side is symmetrical to this, uh, the right side is basically symmetrical to the left side. That basically means that I have 50% of the total distribution of the data in the right hand side, and 50% of the distribution of the data in the left hand side. So, this was about uh, you know Gaussian distribution. The next topic that we will be discussing is something called as log normal distribution. Okay, so this is another kind of distribution, uh, another kind of distribution of data, uh, and it is basically denoted as, you know, a random variable usually belongs to a log normal distribution, log normal distribution. If, if, if log of X is normally distributed, is if log of N is normally distributed. That basically means that a random variable will belong to a log normal distribution. This random variable may have many values like X1, X2, X3, up to Xn, okay? So if I try to find out log of x1, sorry, I, I can write this as ln, log of x2, log of x3, and if I just try to calculate log of each and every value, and if I try to plot this value, if this is normally distributed, normally distributed basically means that if I find out a Gaussian curve, if I, if I found out a bell curve on this particular distribution, then definitely I can say that my distribution or my random variable that is x belongs to a log normal distribution. Just to say in mathematically, I'll just write it down. Log normal distribution basically says that my random variable belongs to a log normal distribution. If log of x right belongs to a Gaussian distribution or a normal distribution with some value of mean and sigma. Okay, if you are able to find this then we can directly say that my random variable x belongs to a no log normal distribution. Now, why, why are we learning various distribution? In my previous video, we have seen something like Gaussian distribution. Right? In my current video, I'm talking about log normal distribution. In my upcoming video, we'll be discussing something like, uh, we'll be discussing about, you know, binomial distribution. We'll be discussing about Bernoulli's distribution. Bernoulli's distribution. Okay, so these are various kind of distribution. Usually, usually data that is actually present follows Gaussian distribution. Most of our data follows distribution. There is a huge chunk of data that also follows non, non, log normal distribution. Now, if I take an example of height, height of the people in this world, I can say that this follows a Gaussian distribution. Because this is the information, because this type, this type of problems or use cases that have come in uh, machine learning, in my experience, I've seen that this kind of distribution usually follows a bell curve. Whereas, if I want to take an example of log normal, before this, let me just show you that log normal, right, distribution, how does it look like, okay? And uh, this one I'll be calling at Gaussian distribution. First of all, we'll see how Gaussian distribution curve looks like, right? As we know that Gaussian distribution usually gives a curve like this, and this is basically my bell curve. Whereas in case of normal distribution, we'll be having a distribution in such a way, 
it will be almost similar to the Gaussian distribution. Only the thing that is changing is that at the end, this gets extended towards and it gets fatter and it does not actually come down properly, right? So this, this end, this end, it does not look like, you know, the bell curve altogether, I mean, the right hand side of the bell curve. This is basically right skewed, right skewed, right? That basically means that you can see that this part almost looks like a bell curve, but the right hand side usually, you know, it gets extended and becomes fatter and fatter. And this, this, this goes on like this. Okay. Now, as I said to you that the example, the distribution of height, you know, the distribution of height, if you, if you take height of different people in a state or average, just you try to find out, it usually follows this bell curve. One good example is the Irish data set. If you, if you know about Irish data set, in Irish data set, there are parameters like petal length, features like petal length. If you try to plot petal length in this form, usually this kind of Gaussian distribution is formed. Okay. And this kind of distribution usually forms in such examples. Let us see one example is income of the people. Income of the people. Now, when I'm saying income of the people, now you see that in the left hand side, you can see that income, income of the people, right? Richer people, they are, they are very less number of richer people. If I, if I just consider this axis as my income, okay? As the income increases, there are less number of people who are earning that much amount of money. Whereas in this median, in this mean case, there are many people who will be earning this many amount of money. Yeah. And similarly, there will be some amount of people who will be earning less amount of money, but there will be very, very less number of people who will be earning a maximum amount of money, a more amount of money. Let, let's consider like $1 million, $2 million, somewhere like that. There'll be a very less number chunk of people, right? So income of the people is a very good example. The second example that I, I have uh, seen it is that now if I, if I consider that, uh, you know, there is a product uh, uh, regarding a product, I see a lot of comments, right? I, I see a lot of comments um, from the people saying that how the product works, right? How the product works. So basically uh, the various feedback of products or any kind of products that are sold in uh, Amazon or Flipkart, right? So when, when we see these comments, the comments also usually follow this pattern. You know, the why I'm saying it follows this pattern because there are very, very less number of people who will be just giving a shorter description. There will be more number of people who will be giving a medium sized description, but there will be very, very less number of people who will be giving a very, very longer description. So if I say, if I consider, let me just draw this. Okay, my example I'm looking at, let us consider that I'm, I'm using Amazon and I'm just seeing the product uh, you know, product uh, reviews. And if I, if I consider reviews and suppose this is my uh, comment length, if I just say that my reviews length or I can write it as comment length, you know, so initially my curve will go like this, but at the end it, it will be extending like this, you know? So this basically means that when my comment length is actually increasing, okay, there will be lot number of comments with, with, with this kind of size of length. Okay, with this kind of size of length, but there will be very, very less number of comments will be having smaller size of length. And similarly, there will be very, very, very smaller uh, comment comment length as we go ahead with different, different, you know, different, different comments that we see. Larger description of comments will be very, very less. Larger description of comments will be very, very less. Larger description of comments will be very, very less. So one more example is very, very nice way. Like, and most of the most of the companies like Amazon. Right. And when, whenever we are working uh, with the data, with respect to sentiment analysis, usually, usually follows this uh, log normal distribution, log normal distribution. Yeah. So th this usually follows log normal distribution. Now, <clears throat> now your, your question may be why we are learning all this distribution. Okay. Why, why are we learning Gaussian distribution? Why are we learning log normal distribution? I, I think we, we may be having this particular question. Now, let me just take an example. Suppose, uh, you know, uh, suppose I have, I, have a, I have a problem statement. I have a problem statement such that I have three parameters. That is a company is there. The company is spending in R&D some amount of money, in marketing some amount of money, and in campaigning some amount of money, 
Then finally, we need to determine what is the profit based on these three parameters that we have, right? And now our data will be having a lot of inputs with respect to R&D, how much it has spent, with respect to marketing, how much it has spent, and with respect to campaign, how much it has spent. We need to determine what is the profit. Now, when, when I'm writing this R&D money, we, whenever we are writing all this kind of different, different values of R&D that was spent with respect to states, suppose if I take states, okay? With respect to states or with respect to different different countries, this much amount was spent. I'm marketing also various where the different different kind of amount is spent. Similarly, you have campaigning. For campaigning, also you have different different amounts, right? Now, initially, you know that there will be a large gap between all these values when I compare with R and D and marketing. And similarly, when I compare marketing with campaigning, there may be different different values, right? So, what what can I do? I I will try to find out what kind of distribution this particular whole data follows suppose my r d data what kind of distribution it follows okay suppose it follows the gaussian distribution suppose it follows the gaussian distribution what i can do is that i can convert this gaussian distribution to something called a standard normal distribution where my mean will be zero and standard deviation will be one right then when i convert this this will be standard scalar we are scaling down we are scaling down we are scaling down to standard normal deviation with some mean is equal to zero and standard deviation is equal to one. So the scale will be same for R and D. Now, suppose if I am having marketing, I'll just uh, clear this. If, suppose if I'm having marketing and this marketing values follow a log normal distribution. Now, if I want to convert this into standard normal distribution, how can I do this? I will just directly find the log of this number. I'll find the log of all these numbers, right? Because when I'm finding the log of these numbers, this becomes log normal distribution. And then I know that uh, if I know that this is log normal distributed, once I find out the log of each and every values in this marketing, yeah, I know that this will follow a Gaussian distribution because that is the property of log normal distribution, right? With some mean, some mean value and sigma value. And then if I have this Gaussian distribution, I can definitely convert this into standard normal distribution. I just have to apply a formula that is X of I minus mu divided by standard deviation. If I convert this, I hope we have discussed about standard normal distribution in our previous class, but just understand if I want to convert this Gaussian distribution to standard normal distribution, I'll just apply this formula X of I minus mu is equal to standard deviation. And finally, I'll be also able to, you know, apply standard scalar. The standard scalar when I apply, this will this marketing value will also become the same. It will be actually in the same scale as that of the R and D spend. Now, when I give my model, if if I give my model this kind of data, which are in exactly in the same scale, I will be getting higher accuracy. I can apply any any algorithms. You know, suppose it is a regression algorithm or it is a classification algorithm. This will give us a perfect values. You know. It will give us it will give us a perfect value and it will give us uh, the right amount of accuracy and with just a little bit of fine tuning, we can get a whole lot of accuracy if we know when to scale down the values by seeing the different kind of distribution. Okay, again, let me just repeat it. What I was saying is that I, I have this marketing and I, I suppose I have this marketing column and I have different different values like $1,500, $2,000, right? $3,000. Now I know, suppose I get from the domain knowledge is that this is following a log normal distribution, log normal distribution. Now I want to scale down this value as R and D right in R and D also I scaled down it to standard normal distribution because R and D was Gaussian distribution, right? So in order to do that, what I did, I found out the log of each and every value, log of each and every value, because I know, the log, since it is no, log normal distribution, the log of this value will follow a Gaussian distribution with some value of mean and sigma. Mean and sigma can be calculated if once I get all my log values of these values, once I get this, I will be knowing that this will follow a Gaussian distribution. Then I can convert this into a standard normal distribution by just applying a formula X of I minus mu divided by sigma. Mu is my mean, mean of all these values. Sigma is basically my standard deviation of all these values. 
And once I convert this, I'll be able to get my standard normal distribution and all the values will be scaled down to the same scale as that of an R&D. And finally, I'll be able to give it to my model and then my model accuracy will be increased, will be increased. This is the technique behind all these things. It, it, it is a wonderful technique, you know. Uh, why many of them don't know, don't know why we do standard scaling and when we should do standard scaling when we should do normal uh, log normal uh, uh, I mean log normalization okay and this whole process this whole process is basically called as log normalization log normalization just go through this guys again this is the wonderful concepts altogether I hope you like the video guys please do subscribe the channel if you have not done in my next video, I'll be discussing more about statistics concepts. Thank you. Thank you one and all.